The hamstrings are one of the muscle groups most people really struggle to effectively train. Often, people pick ineffective exercises for them, movements that only slightly work them, versus exercises that truly develop them. As well, even when people pick better exercises for them, they often make key mistakes that take away from the best results. In order to optimally develop the hamstrings, we need to understand their anatomy, their biomechanical function, their length tension relationship, and how to practically apply this information. The hamstrings are made up of three muscles, one of which has two heads. These are the semimembranosus and semitendinosus on the medial side, and the biceps femoris long head and biceps femoris short head laterally. The semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and long head of the biceps all originate on the ischial tuberosity of the pelvis. They then cross the hip, run down along the femur, where they meet up with the short head of the biceps femoris, which originates on the backside of the femur. From here, the semimembranosus and semitendinosus cross the knee joint medially and insert on the medial portion of the tibia. In contrast, the biceps femoris heads cross the knee joint laterally, inserting on the lateral portion of the tibia and fibula. While the hamstrings are often collectively grouped as one muscle group, they're really more two muscle groups, the medial hamstrings and the lateral hamstrings. This is something we can notice more predominantly as we look at their function. Collectively, they all flex the knee, and they all, but the short head of the biceps femoris, extend the hip. In addition to that, the medial hamstrings can internally rotate the lower leg when flexed, and internally rotate the hip. In contrast, the lateral hamstrings can externally rotate the lower leg when it's flexed, and externally rotate the hip. This is beneficial to consider as there's been research demonstrating that we see different EMG patterns of the hamstrings with different foot positions. Such as during leg curls, we see that if the foot is rotated out more, there's an increase in preference towards the biceps femoris. Whereas if the foot is rotated in more, there's an increase of the semitendinosus and semimembranosus. We've also seen this with movements like stiff-legged deadlifts, something that we discussed in a previous video on increasing your deadlift strength, which I'll link down in the description box below. As well, each of the hamstring muscles appears to have subdivisions distally and proximally. These subdivisions appear to have greater levels of activation with different types of movements, speed of contractions, and at different joint angles. The proximal subdivisions seem to be more stimulated with hip extension-based exercises whereas the distal subdivisions are more stimulated with knee flexion-based exercises. There's also some research suggesting that higher speed contractions place more stimulus on the distal regions of the hamstrings, as we see that sprinters commonly have a significantly greater development of their distal hamstrings. Since our hamstrings generally all cross both the knee and hip, we see that changes in the knee or hip angle will impact their length. As the knee extends, the hamstrings are lengthened. As the knee flexes, the hamstrings are shortened. As the hip flexes, the hamstrings are lengthened. And as the hip extends, the hamstrings are shortened. This is extremely important to understand and explains why squats are an ineffective hamstring exercise. When we squat, we flex the knee and the hip at the same time, and then extend the knee and the hip at the same time to return back up. This limits the hamstrings from being able to produce any significant force and why we don't see the hamstrings hypertrophy much with squat training. This is why our recommendations today are going to be focusing on different types of hip extension or knee flexion exercises. Now, while we could then just say, do a mix of knee flexion and hip extension exercises at varying speeds to hit the hamstrings, we have new research that has shown that the length that we work the hamstrings at can have a big impact. Yanagasawa 2020 demonstrated that working the hamstrings at a long muscle length had greater activation of the hamstrings overall. This means when doing hip extension, have the knee extended. And when doing knee flexion, having the hip flexed. Normally, I'd say that we shouldn't rely too heavily on one study based on EMG to guide what we do. But there was a second study released recently from Mayo 2020 that comes in. Their study looked at implementing this concept with the leg curl, comparing either the seated or the lying leg curl done for 12 weeks. 
they found that the seed leg curl resulted in significantly more strength and hypertrophy for all of the hamstrings except the biceps femoris short head. Since the biceps femoris short head doesn't cross the hip, it makes sense that it wouldn't be impacted by changing the length of the hip. Now, the important question would be, how do you practically actually use this? Well, I wouldn't say that it means that you shouldn't do any exercises that work your hamstrings at a short muscle length. However, when deciding between an exercise that works at a long length and a short length, the longer length one is likely gonna result in more overall hypertrophy in the long term. So when looking at selecting exercises, it does really come down to either a knee flexion or hip extension movement. For knee flexion, trying to find some hip flexed options can be beneficial. A seat leg curl machine is a great option, though it's not necessarily available to everyone, particularly given the current state of the world. If you don't have access to a leg curl machine, there are a few options that we can look to for flexed leg curls. A GHR with the hip flexed, focusing on maintaining a relatively flexed hip and loading it up as appropriately as you can for execution. If you don't have a GHD to do it on, then you can try a razor curl on the ground. Just have your feet anchored and focus on controlling out and back. And to do this better, I recommend using your hands to help assist you, and that way you can still pull as hard as you can with your feet anchored. You can also try and do a hips flexed leg curl with a band or cable column. You can sit on a box and pull in, but this can be hard to stay anchored down and make the movement kind of awkward. Or you can lay on the ground and have your band anchored up high and pull down from it. And you can use your hands to help support the position. Now, if you can't get good tension with any of these options, you don't have to do a hips flex option and you can go to hips extended option. And there's a lot of great options here, such as doing a Nordic curl or a glute ham raise. You could also do a band or cable curl and tons of other options based upon what equipment you have. We actually made an entire video all about different ways to do leg curls, depending upon what equipment you have access to. So I'll link that down in the description box below. As you do these, you can experiment with rotating your feet in different directions based on your preference. You might find that for your sporting needs, one motion might be more important to train. Or aesthetically, you may have your medial or lateral hamstrings less developed and want to emphasize them more. As you do all of these knee flexion options, work to maintain your hip angle as you do them. Or if you are going to change your hip angle, try to go into a more hip extension position, not flexing your hip as you go. Like we discussed earlier with the squat, doing knee flexion and hip flexion at the same time will reduce the hamstring's ability to create tension and take away from the effects we talked about. This is something that we see happen during movements like glute ham raises, or lying leg curls where someone's butt shoots up during the lift as they attempt to create more force. Now, when it comes to hip extension, we've got a ton of options. Firstly, we generally want to have the knee relatively extended or close to extended based on the research that we discussed earlier. This means movements like back extensions, which we can do on a GHD or Roman chair are awesome. If you don't have access to those, you can set up one with a barbell on a rack, either with your hips on it or your feet on it, and then your hips anchored on a bench. Doing a single leg version in any of these is a really good option to challenge your hamstrings really well. Alternatively, doing a long lever bridge where we go through hip extension with our knee almost extended can be a fantastic option as well. I like having the foot elevated to really work the hamstrings through more range. You can also do this with a single leg and light those puppies up. Then we also had the classic hinge variations like a Romanian deadlift or a stiff legged deadlift that we can do with a barbell. These two exercises have shown high levels of hamstring usage and research and can be really beneficial to use. You can also do single leg versions of these to increase the relative loading on the hamstrings over the back. The good morning is another excellent option. In contrast to a back squat where we bend our hips and knees, here we bend primarily just the hips and keep a small bend in the knees to allow us to shift our hips back. This is an important point here, as many people report feeling their back more than their hamstrings with a good morning. If you just bend forward, you won't feel it as much in your hamstrings and more in your back. If you sit back well though, you'll feel it a ton more in your hammies. For all of the hip extension movements, you can play around with the toe position like we discussed earlier. Just like for the knee flex option, seeing which matches up best for your needs. 
and that collectively is gonna be the best hamstring exercises. That might not seem like a single best exercise like some might want, but it's hard to do that due to everyone having different equipment and varying goals. If you said I had to pick a single exercise, I'd pick the seated leg curl with the toes forward since that'll be a nice sturdy, stable option that works the hamstrings at a long muscle length and hits the medial and lateral heads really well. Otherwise, I'd pick a variation that you can load well and progress over time. If possible, try to use one that's at a long length and make sure to do both knee flexion and hip extension options. Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button down below and we'll see you in the next video. Load up, let's go.